to live and to love the gospel of the Lord. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene made her way to the tomb. And when she reached the tomb, she found that the stone had been rolled away. And so she ran to tell Simon Peter and the other disciples, they have taken away the body of our Lord and I don't know where they have put him. So Simon Peter and another disciple ran to the tomb. They were running side by side, but the other disciple outran Simon Peter and reached the tomb first. He did not go in, but bent down and saw the linen cloths that had covered the body of Jesus lying on the ground. Presently, Simon Peter arrived. He went right into the tomb. He too saw the linen cloths lying on the ground. And the cloth that had covered the head of Jesus rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, the one that had reached the tomb first, went in. He too saw and believed. Prior to that time, they had failed to understand the meaning of the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The disciples then went home. But Mary Magdalene, stayed outside the tomb, <laughs> weeping. <laughs> and still weeping. She went inside the tomb, and there she saw two angels standing where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. Woman. Why are you weeping, they asked. <laughs> they have taken away the body of our Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. <laughs> Going outside, she saw Jesus, though she did not recognize him. Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have taken away his body, tell me where you have put it, so that I may go and give him a proper burial. Jesus said, Mary. Rabuni? Master?
<laughs> oh, master. <laughs> Mary, do not cling to me, but go now and tell the brothers that I have risen and that I am ascending to my God and your God, to my Father and your Father. So Mary Magdalene went. And told the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And he has said these things to me. I have. I have. Later that night, the disciples were gathered together. And even though the doors of the room where they were were locked, Jesus came and said to them, Peace be with you. Then he showed them his hands and his side. At the sight of the Lord, the disciples rejoiced. Peace be with you, he said to them again. As the Father has sent me, so now I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit whose sins you shall forgive. They are forgiven. Whose sins you shall retain. They are retained. Now it happened that Thomas, the name means twin, was not with them. So when the disciples said, we have seen the Lord. Thomas replied, unless I can take my finger and put it into the nail marks of his hand, unless I can take my hand and put it into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were again gathered together. And this time, Thomas was with them. And even though the doors were locked, Jesus came and said to them, 
peace be with you. And then to Thomas. Come. Touch the nail marks in my hands. Give me your hand and put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. My Lord. And my God. Thomas. Thomas. You believe because you have seen. Happy are they who have not seen. And still believe. There were many other things that Jesus did Things, things not written down in this book, but these are written so that you may believe, so that you and you may believe that Jesus is the Christ and believing this have life through his name. Does it surprise you that Mary Magdalene and the disciples, especially Thomas, were so surprised that Jesus rose from the dead? I guess we can easily understand that if someone close to us died and a few days later appeared physically to us, We'd be more than a little surprised. But Jesus had told them about his approaching death and resurrection. But nothing could have prepared them beyond their wildest imagination for what they beheld when Christ appeared to them. What we need to understand is what this resurrection of Jesus means in our life, even here and now, not to mention the hereafter. But even here and now, Jesus rises and raises us up. If we can understand how we share in the dying, for there's no Easter Sunday without a prior Good Friday. There is no rising without first dying. But if we could just look at what has happened in our life. Now consider for a moment what is maybe the worst or one of the worst things that have happened to you in your life. And can you believe that even that worst thing that's happened to you God can use to bring about a greater blessing? Can you believe that? Then you can understand, at least begin to appreciate 
the power of Jesus' resurrection that he wants us to know and experience. It was only a month ago when Father Michael first came to our parish and gave us this beautiful presentation of the passion and resurrection of Jesus. I sat in this very first pew and was privileged to sit next to Admiral Jeremiah Denton. Many of you have heard or know him. Admiral Jeremiah Denton was a prisoner of war in Vietnam where he suffered seven years in solitary confinement all throughout that time experiencing terrible torture by his captors. And there was a, uh, he turned to me after Father Michael had finished this powerful presentation and tears were running down his eyes. And he said, I'm so inspired. And then he looked right into my eyes. He said, Father, I want to tell you, your friends told me about your, what you're going through. And I want to share with you that when I was going through the worst of times in my imprisonment, in fact, when my captors were torturing me to the point where I knew I was at the breaking point, this prayer came to my mind and I wasn't even praying. The prayer was, Sacred Heart of Jesus, I give my life to you. He said, no sooner had I begun to pray that than this amazing peace came over me. This assurance that I knew as I gave my life to the Lord that the Lord would take care of me. And so transforming and transparent was that peace and blessed assurance that even my captor stopped torturing me that moment and went to his commanding officer and said, I can't do it anymore. And they let him go. Isn't that amazing? He looked in my eyes with that look of Jesus and said to me, Father, I tell you, if you would only pray that prayer yourself, sacred heart of Jesus, I give my life to you. I promise you, no matter what you suffer and whether you live or die, you will be very happy and at peace. I knew the Lord was talking to me through him. And I told the admiral, I promise you, I will pray that every day. And I will do that. And I have been praying that every day and all through the day. And I can tell you, honestly, I have begun to feel that divine peace that surpasses understanding. I have begun to feel a little of that inner joy that only Jesus can give. I've only begun. But I want to continue in this prayer and this surrender to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. I give my life to you. I encourage you to pray that with me. And I tell you, I do not know what my future holds, but I know who holds my future. Amen. <laughs>